picture I look good. <sighs> <laughs> Hey, what's up guys? So, I'm here today with, uh, with my dad. Uh, it's my first time ever getting my dad on a video, so this is, uh, this is certainly a different experience. But, as you guys all know, stories are a big part of my channel. And, um, as true as they are, and they're all 100% real, that I always keep telling you guys, I thought it would be cool if I actually got my dad to come on camera and actually tell you, tell you guys one of his crazy stories he's had because He's got plenty of stories as well, and I mean, what better person to hear it from than the man himself, right? So how you feeling, Dad? I'm feeling great. I uh, want to share a little story with you here. Uh, it's probably one of the scariest moments of my life. Going back to where it all began, it was like a mid-August day at home. Uh, time came, I had to go back to work, leaving the wife, leaving the kids. Leaving us all behind. Yeah, yeah, I know. But <laughs> it, it, it is a difficult day. So... It's really hard to get past that day, but again, it's routine, been doing it for all my life. So we got on the plane, St. John's, I fly to Toronto. That's in Canada. <laughs> Sorry, sorry to say that. <clears throat> so we fly to Toronto, spend some time there in the lounge, getting ready for our next flight to St. Paulo. St. Paulo is uh, a city in Brazil. It's actually, probably, I think it is actually the fifth largest populated city in the world. Oh, okay. Yeah, Didn't it's it's quite a big place. So anyway, we uh, we we jump on Air Canada. We beautiful flight down. It was nice, smooth. It's eleven hours. So we get in San Paulo. We have one more flight to make. It's a fifty-minute flight. It's from. Um, San Paulo to Rio de Janeiro. If Go you in. if you guys didn't know, my my dad that like that his job requires him to fly away. So that's that's why he was flying. He works down in well, you worked down in Brazil at the mm, time. Well, right? Actually, I worked in a lot of places around the world, but at this moment, I was working in uh, Brazil. And it's routine as usual. You know, we go in, we have a little lunch, have a beer. So we're about to, uh, we board the flight. And again, everything is normal. And in fact, uh, at that time, we had the Canadian underwater swim team on board. Okay. And they were all at uh, going to Rio at that particular time to compete in some competition. So the plane takes off. I'm in the third seat out. I have two of these young girls sitting next to me and uh, they're next to the window, one next to the window, one in the middle. So the plane goes off like, like it would. It's, um, so we're just settling in like, you know, like to try to get a little nap because the long flight from the night before and everything. Yeah, yeah, then yeah. bomb by and like this and bomb. Boom! And I'm like, whoo, sh what was that? And everybody is looking at each other. And next thing you know, boom, again, holy crap. And we're like, holy crap. And you know, the heart is starting to pound a little bit here now. Yeah. So I looks over next to me, and here's a couple of these young girls with their camera, and they're filming the fire that's coming from the engine. It was like literally oh my 20 God. feet shooting backwards. Now again, the pilot makes no announcement. All this fire is coming from the engine. These young girls are kind of like, I don't think they really realize the danger that they were in. It's like, time. yeah, the typical, just haul out the yeah, oh like, my God. Yeah, they're quite young, like 13, 14 kind of uh, age. Oh, so they're, oh, okay. So, so they're, they're starting out. Yeah, so they're, they're quite young. And, um, and, and our, like, reaches over and looks through the window. Holy crap, all this fire is coming out. And I'm going like, oh, shit. <laughs> so, so, so essentially, your plane was on fire while you guys were flying. Yeah, we're like ten thousand feet in the air right now. Ten, th ten thousand feet in the air. The plane is on fire. Yeah. Uh, there's still no announcement. <laughs> there's still no announcement. Yeah, what? And there's still no announcement. And remember, now we're in Brazil, so so they just speak in Portuguese. So the so the pilots were just trying to be all like yeah. Just so no, they, there's no fire. Don't worry about it. So next thing we see the plane like leaning down and turning around to go back right cool. Yeah. And the pilot comes on and he says uh, in Portuguese, uh, we have some technical mechanical problems. Yeah. I said, yeah, don't sh me. <laughs> well, yeah, so, well, it's just a fire. On okay. The way, yeah. So anyway, the fire is out now because they, apparently they have a, a system in the um, plane where they can put CO2 on the fire and put it out. So the fire is out on one side, but the plane's still running. We have, still have one engine. What I didn't know 
at the time was that when a plane is running, this plane had two engines, by the way. One is now gone. A plane could only have one attempt to land yeah. with one engine. You yeah. can't go down and decide, oh, there's a dog going across the runway and take yeah. off. Up. You, when you commit, you're gone. You have to go. I didn't know it at the mo at the time. I knew this after the effect. But anyways, the plane is coming down. We have all these fire trucks, emergency services, like literally running up alongside the plane on both sides. And the plane landed. Thank God everybody was safe. Nobody got hurt. Okay. But man, I tell you, it was scary. And I'll tell you why it was scary. It was Besides really, the fact that it was on fire. It was on fire. Yes, that's one scary part. And the other scary part is the language was Portuguese. And when the pilot did make the couple of announcements that he did make, nobody really understood it. None of the Canadian swim team, no one in my team that was or in my, uh, my colleagues and I, we kind of figured out that it was a mechanical issue because we've been there working for a while. So we've learned a few words of the language, but it was really, really, it was a scary, scary <laughs> moment. I tell you, it was my worst experience. I've been um, traveling overseas for 16 years. It's my worst experience ever. It's pretty bad. On an airplane, yeah. I mean, I thought I, I got some crazy stories, but I mean, this is it's pretty up there. But uh, it's not one I want to have to experience again. Yeah, I don't think anybody wants to experience that. But you have to, you know what? And when it happens, there's nothing I can do. I'm in the air. Well, 10,000 feet. Yeah, yeah. So what do I do? I can't do anything. The only thing I can do, I, I thought about you guys, thought about your mom, thought about, you know, God, what are they going to do without me? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we need you, Dad. We need you. And uh, it was just, uh, God, you know, it was just one of these moments where you really appreciate your whole life and family in that moment. I'm not going to lie, every time I fly, I, I feel that way too, because I just hate flying. You guys know I hate flying. I just, I can't stand it. Yeah. But with that being said though, guys, that is my dad's story. Really crazy experience, and thankfully he's okay. I mean... I mean, that was a while ago now, wasn't it? That was yeah, a few about, years ago. No, it was about three years ago. Yeah, but, uh, so... I have more, if you like that. Yeah, well, I mean, who knows? If you guys want to hear more stories from uh, my dad, yeah. let me know. Yeah. Let us know in the comments below. And, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more great content. And, um, thanks for watching. Bye. All right, see you guys. Okay. Well. That'll... Jeez, I'm going to be a movie star.